Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Michael Noland here and tonight what I wanted to do is talk about Jim Gordon. The drummer for Derek and the Dominoes has died. He has passed away at the age of 77 and what a rock story this guy lived. Now Jim passed away at uh, Vacaville, California, a place you do not want to wind up in. Trust me, folks, I worked in the mental health field for over 25 years, and that's not a place that you want to wind up spending the rest of your life. Of course, he was there because he was found guilty of murdering, can you believe this, his own mother. Now, that all happened some 40 years ago, and of course, he spent the latter half of his life incarcerated because of that. But there is so much more to this guy's story. You see, this dude was a domino. That's right. Derek and the Dominoes, one of the greatest rock albums ever done, and in my opinion, Eric Clapton's finest album, no matter what incarnation you're looking into his playing. Now, the band Derek and the Dominoes only put out one album, but holy Toledo, what an album, Layla and other assorted love songs. And uh, it consisted of Eric Clapton as pretty much its uh, leader, uh, of course, Jim on drums, and then Carl Radel on bass, Bobby Whitlock on keyboards, and of course, Dwayne Allman on slide guitar. Now, in those recordings, there was also a little bit of Delaney and Bonnie, and I've got to tell you, folks, if you're not familiar with this album, you need to listen to it. It is one of rock and roll's greatest albums, in my opinion. Very blues-based, yet such a rock and roll attitude, all blended perfectly on that album. Now for you eagle-eyed uh, fans of rock, you know what I'm talking about. Those of you who used to spend hours reading the liner notes, you know Jim Gordon from George Harrison's All Things Must Pass. What a wonderful album. But this guy played with the Beach Boys, John Lennon, as well. Delaney and Bonnie, and that's kind of key to his whole story. You see, when he was with Delaney and Bonnie, that was the Eric Clapton and the George Harrison connection. That's where those two first met Jim Gordon. But how did Jim Gordon get to the point where he was playing with the famous duo of Delaney and Bonnie? Well, that goes back even further. You see, he was a protege of Hal Blaine. Hal who, you might ask? Well, for some of you, you already know who I'm talking about. Hal Blaine was a drummer down in LA. He played on so many hits. You've heard this guy drumming, even if you don't know his name. And he was part of about 15 to 20 uh, people who consisted of a group known informally as the Wrecking Crew. Now. Out of all those people, Glenn Campbell even played with these people for a while, right? The three that always come to the cream of the crop for me is Tommy Tedesco on guitar. Oh, what an amazing story. Talk about a man willing to reinvent himself and move from the East Coast to the West Coast just to get a job. And of course, the wonderful, the beautiful Carol Kay on bass. You like that bass line on Good Vibrations? thank her. And of course, Hal Blaine. Now, these were the hottest session players in LA. And the whole music industry seemed to move to the West Coast almost overnight. Or at least the pop and pop rock music industry, as well as pop, all started finding that as their recording hub area. It was later when Hal Blaine informally dubbed them the Wrecking Crew. The reason he did so was because, well, they consisted of a group of musicians not only willing, deigning to record pop rock, but that uh, many people who didn't like them in the studios, you know, of the old guard, you know, they saw them as a wrecking crew. They were going to wreck recorded music for sure. Instead, they reinvented the whole recording process and talk about expert black belt ninja assassin musicians. 
The Wrecking Crew had him. And that's where Jim Gordon got his start. Hal Blaine would give Jim jobs recording sessions that because of him being so busy, he couldn't make. Jim Gordon was basically Hal's number one choice for a recommendation to a producer in need of a drummer. Of course, with those connections, he eventually wound up with Delaney and Bonnie. And of course, we all know the story, George Harrison hanging out with Delaney and Bonnie at one point, and of course, Eric Clapton doing the same. And that's when a lot of those musicians wound up on famous rock albums. George Harrison's All Things Must Pass must have a thousand musicians on that album. All right. Not even a hundred, but a whole lot of them. And of course, the same thing can be said about the wonderful Layla album. And here's another tidbit for y'all. Jim Gordon is the co-writer for the song Layla. He was the one that introduced the latter half uh, of that song when it goes into a piano-driven, almost orchestrational aspect of the whole song. That part of that song is what made it a classic. Now there's been rumors that he actually stole that from uh, his girlfriend at the time. Uh, who was that? Rita Coolidge? And yet I've never heard her state anything other than the fact that he occasionally would be physical with her. Now it's right at about this point or directly after Jim's life started going out of control. First of all, he was into, like a lot of rockers, into the drug scene and he went full tilt boogie on it. And of course, later uh, with some alcohol included with that, uh, he developed schizophrenia and his friends and his bandmates were noticing that he was starting to act paranoid. Paranoia being a byproduct of schizophrenia often. As he eventually lost more and more control, evidently he had the run-in with his mother, a fateful run-in. And as far as rock and roll was concerned, his life was over that moment. Now, just preceding the murder, evidently Jim started hearing his mother's voice in his head all of the time. Another byproduct of schizophrenia. And years later, when interviewed, he said that although he could remember the events, he felt thoroughly detached from those events, almost like he was watching a damned movie. But before that, this guy not only played with who I've already mentioned, but how about Alice Cooper? How about the Beach Boys, Joan Baez, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, and even Steely Dan? I mean, you know what? This guy's one of my favorite drummers in rock and roll. He would hit the top 20 for sure. Blessed with a talent rarely ever achieved, good looking, long, curly hair, and all of that went away with a fateful decision. You know, I almost look at it like Jim Gordon just left us at one point. Prior to that, there was Jim Gordon, the rock star. But after that, we got a glimpse into Mr. Hyde, didn't we? You know, my last video, we talked about Brian May from Queen and the many charities that uh, he backs. And I brought up several times that, especially his mental health charities, there were two that he is backing. Those are important to me, folks. I worked in the field. I talked to people who said that they saw Jesus as I was talking to them and that he was talking to them as I interviewed them. And so that and depression in general, I've gone through some depression in my life and those are all insidious things that can catch you unawares. And you know what? Your whole life can change in a microsecond. But you know what? After this last 40 years, I think that Jim's life hasn't been one that he would have chosen to live at all. So maybe this is his opportunity to rest in peace. All right, so that's the video for today. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. That helps the YouTube algorithm, as we've said many times, uh, better identify the channel, and that's good for channel growth, and that's good for dialogue growth, folks. 
in the comments. The tribe grows as well. And if you haven't subscribed to uh, the channel as of yet, it is more than freaking easy. All you have to do is hit that subscribe to the tribe button, then tap that top bell icon uh, so that you'll be notified of all my future videos on classic rock. We discussed a little bit of classic rock today, but we also discuss live music, the current condition of the music industry on this channel, as well as where it's going in the future. All right, so I'm Michael Noland. This is, of course, the bottom line. And you know what, folks? Together, you and I, we are the tribe. All right, I'll see you in my next video. Mm -hmm.